Welcome to Toffee TV. Marcel Brands has done his first interview with Everton discussing his new job at the club. Baz, what did you make? Yeah, I was, can I just say that when we the video we released with the director of football <laughs> was done in February when we still had the PE teacher, hence the, the lukewarm um, <laughs> reception to the director of football. Uh, no, back to Marcel Brands, yeah, I was quite impressed um, really with what he said. Um, seemed quite calm, seemed as if he knows exactly what he wants um, and I've said before just when you've, you're fed up with Everton they go and pull you back, they bring this Dutch fella out with his white train, he's not looking sharp and he woos you with, mm. with like he's got a plan which Everton don't normally do. Um, and I thought he, I thought he, he handled the interview, you know, probably like you'd expect. But I thought he said a lot of interesting things, a lot of things that we wanted to know, a lot of things that we discussed and said we hope yeah. to hear. Um, I don't know whether anyone was writing questions down, and took them to him, but it was uh, no. I thought it was, I thought it was very good. I thought it gave us, it was a reason to be hopeful. That was my take on it. I thought it was really interesting that it was actually filmed in PSV Stadium. Yeah, I just yeah. loved the Dutch, I just saw like, yeah, you're leaving, just come and film me. Yeah, do whatever you want. Just chilled out on his desk with his traps on. I just, loved the Everton programmes he had on his desk as well. He, he knows. He knows. He knows. He's, um, no, I thought it was I thought it was um, really good interview. It was only seven minutes long or whatever, mm. but I thought it was, I, th I, don't, I don't think it was what he said as such, it was just the way he got it over. It was really calm really collected like he knew exactly what he was talking about mm. it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't filled with like mass mass excitement it was just like i've got this mm. don't worry about it and I, and I think that's the calmness that Everton football club need i think it's a man who knows what his job is simple as that mm. he knows what his job is he's been doing it for years and he's going to come in and do it and i think that's what that's what he he, he, you know, exuded over it, on mm. it, and um, without going into big detail, you know, of what what was asked, he, you know, he didn't go into too much detail. He just said, "This summer is about getting the players in that'll help the team, and then we'll go from there." And mm. I, I thought that was really interesting, you know, really interesting that there'll be a plan and there's a plans there. But first and foremost, it's about making Everton better, and then we'll work on all those other things. But I thought, you know, considering we didn't really hear anything from Steve Walsh, did we? Mm. You know, uh, there was no presence from him. I think he'd probably done an interview when he first came in, mm. can't remember. Um, and we've heard nothing from him since, really. Um, this fella seems to to have a grasp on everything because he's done the job, basically. He knows what he wants. And I just thought the way he went about it and you know we all work together it's the fans club it's not our club we're just trying to make it better and the stuff he said about the academy and, and you're right the first job is he didn't he didn't flower anything when when the question was asked what what you do first he didn't go well you know we're gonna get in and have a look and, and we'll we'll chat and we'll see what he was like we've got to do the first team immediately that's where we're concentrating because we've got the season coming up so we need a manager get that get that clarified get the players and then when it was asked that when he was asked about the players it was yeah you know i'll have a say but i need to speak to the manager because he's the fella that's actually working with these day in day out mm. you know and we will go through this and and i know it's probably just standard stuff but i think it's what we needed to hear yeah. because i think i don't know about you but as the season went on and as the process has gone on with steve walsh i just question what he actually does Mm. I've, I've seen no I know you, you'll get little snippets Everton have got this scout from Man City and the, but, but how's that ever played out Wait, what's happened where are you up to with that what have you why aren't he should have been doing a monthly update really for the website I think he should have mm. a video a month or every couple of months this is where we are in the process we're trying to do this this is the vision you can't you know and I just feel as though with this fella Dutch are quite straightforward anyway are mm. quite forthright in what they're doing and I think he's going to have much more of a presence around him. I think he's going to have a presence at Finch Farm yeah. um, and a presence in with the signings and going and doing different things. And, he, and I just thought I thought it was it was interesting. I think he's more akin to being 
almost the manager than being yeah, like yeah. if <laughs> if if um Steve Walsh's role was almost like a glorified scout. Mm. This fella's almost like a glorified manager. Mm. You know what I mean? I think that's that's more of what his role is based on. I don't think he is the manager. You know, he's not the manager. I don't think he's going to step on the manager's toes because I think the manager's job is going to be clearly defined, and what and his job is going to be clearly defined. I think that's one of the things that will happen straight away. And I think it was really interesting when he said about the manager and saying that we need a young, modern, modern. manager to come in and. And, and and know the role and do the role and, and everyone sort of you know we've basically hinted that everyone knows where they're going to be and you know it, I, I, again that, that puts people's that puts people's mind at rest with sit at, you know conversations about who should be the manager and well it should be this fella it should be that fella and you're like well hang on now you know now you know what the what, what the, the thinking what is. the thinking is behind it now you know how it all fits into it all fits in and I think that that really helps as well because. You know, if people go now and say, oh, I, I still want it to be this fella, I still want it to be that fella, and you go, well, hang on. If the plan's going to work, it's got to be this kind of manager. Mm-hmm. And then if only certain kinds of people fit into that, into that, then that window is quite clear, you know, what we need. Um, and then that's all helpful. Because then, then it's simply, then it's like, if you don't agree with that, then you don't agree with what the plan is. And mm-hmm. if you don't agree with what the plan is, that's, that's fine. But then understand that just understand that that's the plan mm. and I think as you just said before that's something that Everton haven't had for a long time is a plan put in place to try and make the first team competitive and it, and that that's ultimately all it comes down to we can't we can't bemoan the fact that we're not keeping up with modern day football which we all have a little go at mm. if we're not using modern day practices it, it, I've I was one I've I've said to you you know this we've had conversations before and I've said I like the idea of the manager choosing the players because he's mm. got to pick them because it's alien to me to go you bring me some players and go yeah I work with them well the way you put it across is we'll discuss it and and we'll identify the best player and that's what that's what the fella from PSV said he does he he's very hands on with the manager and it's. This is the kind of player who'll fit in the system, and, and they identify that together, and he goes and sorts. But it. this is the thing, isn't it? Okay, that's the practice, and that's been the practice for a long time, especially mm. in British football. But the world's the world is. I know the world's a smaller place now, but I think by being a smaller, it also creates bigger opportunities. Mm. You can you can go and find, you can go and find players, and find you know kids playing in parks in the middle of nowhere now. Because the world, because the world's closer, you know, mm. someone can go. Well, I've seen this kid play because I've seen something. We've got a scout here, or we've got a scout there. It might be like a full-time scout. It might be someone that the club, you know, work with or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he gets the footage and he sends the footage over, and then they send. It. And that the manager's job can't be go sifting through that. Yes, over the years, they'll have had they'll have had different levels of scouts and it works its way up. And brands, I think, you know, you look at someone like brands. His job will be to to say if the manager might come in and go, listen, I want that player. He looks great because mm. that's how it's always been. And brands will go, listen, I've got four videos of four lads there that can do what he can do. I know he can. We can get him after price. We don't have to battle with X, Y, and Z for him. Yeah, yeah. Or if we miss out on him, how about we go for him because. Mm. And that's that's what modern day scouting is. That's how people sign, you know, people that you've never heard of, or when you go, where did he get him from? And you go, because it's it's extensive, it's extensive scouting, and I think a manager can't always do that. But I think that conversation's right. What you've just said, you've got to have that conversation where a manager walks into a room and says, "Well, I'd like I'd like this player," but then the, then the technical director or director of football just goes, "Well, fine, but I think I can get you someone better." Mm. And then they sit down and look at the video or go and watch them and then the fella goes, the manager goes, you're right, he is better. Mm. I think that's where the conversations have got to be. Well, it's got to be that because you've, it's about working together, isn't it? It's mm. about the whole, if it doesn't flow, then the problems yeah. arrive. And Trust. I think that's what happens. 
There's got to be Reading trust between the lines. I think that's what happened with Cumin. But I think that worked on both ways with Cumin and Steve oh, Walsh. Oh, yeah, think, it's not all down to Steve Walsh. I think Cumin was too stubborn to allow other people's opinions yeah. into the room at times. Yeah, um, definitely. It, it all has to be. See, the manager might come. I don't know. The manager might come in and go, "Well, look at this plane." And they go, "Well, hang on. We're trying to build this. Mm. That's not what we want." Yes, he's got assets, but it's not what we. He's not going to help it. And then that all has to come into play. So. Um, I mean that covers most things, but you know he also made comments that weren't in the video, weren't in the video regarding uh, Adam Ola Luchman as well. Mm. He said he's aware of the players that were on loan yeah. and, and and the scene and play and uh, you know wants to have a chat with them and wants to wants to you know make sure he's at Everton next season basically. So that mm. I mean that that's good as well, isn't it? That's that's promising. Yeah, you know that it's all about younger players creating a younger mm. hungry team. Um, Adam Ola Luchman's got loads of good attributes like we said before he's done really well at Leipzig he'll be better for the experience mm. um, and he, he needs a manager who, who will believe in him and he'll play attacking football yeah. and that's that's the difference isn't it and if you've got if that's the theme that we're going with if that's the 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 vision to play fast attacking football you want fast attacking players mm. and that's what Adam Ola Luckman is and we want we want our team full of younger players, who, but they've got to be good enough, not just younger players mm. for the sake of it. Ideally, we'd have half a dozen from the academy well, who well, that's, at a good level. But that's the thing he sort of wants. He wants to do as well, doesn't he? he wants to restructure the the academy to make sure there's more first team, more players going into the first team. Mm. That takes pressure off buying players, so that so that you can buy better players better quality, and have and the money goes into them and, mm-hmm. and, and which is again really promising that's something he's going to look at and again something that's been hinted at is tra- you know making sure that the um, the wages come d- down yeah, as well. yeah. And, yeah. and I you know I imagine it might be I don't know with the Wayne Rooney situation whether that's been part of it it's almost like saying well if, you're, we're, if we're going to pay you a top wage we expect s- something back and, and it's it, it's it sounded like he's bringing like a the ethos of you you will deserve you will get paid what you deserve it seems like that's what basically it sounds like mm. you know they're encouraging and we won't waste money if we don't feel it's right which again I mean I know in this era we like last summer we used to spending a lot of money but you know you've got to see a return on that mm. you can't be spending we're not it's not a it you know it's not an endless no, stream we're not Man City, we're, not Man City we're not PSG we, we haven't got a country behind us but, you know we've got, they've got they've got to see but also but also it's it's you're going to pay someone it's a reward isn't it mm. you want players who are like well I'm I'm happy to sit on the bench and earn my £100,000 a week mm. that, you know if that's the case if they're going to say well listen you mightn't be part of the plans next season starting and, and your pay will reflect that and if you don't like that you can go somewhere else mm. and I think that's that's healthy as well. Yeah, you, the listen, the wage bill is a is a big thing, and people will will look at it and it'll be doom and gloom. It'll be oh, shelter buy and this that and the other. It's it's nothing to do with that. You've got to follow financial fair play mm. in with the Premier League rules in terms of the wages. And so if you're if you've got lads who aren't involved on big money, let them out the door. Yeah, create that money in the wage bill. For, for younger players who but also don't give everyone big silly contracts. You're gonna have to do it with, with top players, but we've got players there who are on much more than the likes of Delhi Alley and Harry mm. Kane who've been doing it every week mm. for years, you know, and you're looking I seen I can't remember who it was, but there's like another player, like a high profile player and it's like his wages are sixty five grand and you're like Snyder and that on like 120 yeah. you know that kind of thing yeah. so if you're paying a hundred thousand pound a week or whatever you need your yeah, yeah. then players Definitely. to be knocking it out the park every week for you and, and it sounds like he's going to get a real handle on all of that yeah that's well, good that's what it's he starts like. his job officially on june on the, the 1st, 1st yeah. which again is is a lot of comes down to it's the start of the financial year basically so it comes down to contracts and things like that but I'm sure he's getting plenty of stuff in getting his preparation might be getting a bit of rest in um, and he just seems like he knows the job and that's the that's the best thing yeah um, and uh, yeah good and he, start good start sounds See good where we go from here it's good the club did the interview as well yeah I think yeah. that's uh, that's helpful yeah keeps everyone in Very the know helpful. and um, we can go about 
and let's hope they continue that and keep that up let's yeah. hope we hear from them regularly yeah. and then yeah i mean everyone's clear then what's happening yeah and, and what the roles are yeah. and he can go about now appointing the new manager getting on with doing that and it all fits together and that's that's all we want yeah let us know your thoughts on marcel brands his first interview for everton what did you what did you think about what he had to say thanks for watching toffee tv we'll see you later